Fellas, it's contract season amongst the wrestling industry, and we just got confirmation that one man will be staying with his respective brand, and that is Finn Balor, who is staying with WWE. Now, a lot more contracts are in limbo right now, but first, let's go ahead and start off with Finn Balor. Kittle, did Finn Balor make the right decision, or do you think he should have jumped to a different uh, promotion? I mean, at this point of his career, and more so at this point of his life, where he's quite up there as far as you know, age go, especially when you know, considered uh, wrestling is in consideration, let's say. You know what? That's okay. I think uh, I heard him say from his own mouth that this is the most fun he's had ever while he's, he was like wrestling. So now those are not light words. Those are not empty words. Like if you're happy, if you're having fun, man, it doesn't matter. Like um, WWE, he has a ceiling. That's the unfortunate part about it. Even with yeah. Triple H at the helm, even then at the main roster, like he couldn't beat, uh, you know, Seth Rollins when, when it counted. And so I don't believe, regardless of how long he stays, it's cool that he stays. I wish we knew how long he was staying too. Regardless though, I just see him doing a bit more things in the tag team division, intercontinental title, US title, sure. Will he ever win the Royal Rumble? Will he ever win maybe the World Championship? I mean, I'm, it's not impossible. He's... Out of the Judgment Day is one of the more likely people to do it. I, I just don't see it happening. Though still, I have no problem with it because imagine if he went to AEW. Then you would kind of do the same things. Maybe he would be at the main event for a while, but like, does he want it at that point? Because that's going to be a lot of pressure on him to perform, to have these banger matches after banger matches every time he's out there. And right now, like he can have just pretty good matches. Had the most fun time of his life. I'm sure with the Judgment Day, he's hanging around with the same guys. One of the guys he's hanging around with is his, like, student. I'm sure they, like, you know, hang out, like, what do you call it? Get okay. along great with each other, right? JD? It's your own student, dude. Like, uh, what? JD, JD, yeah. It's like, wow. yeah. It's like, it's, it must be so cool seeing him progress, even though he progresses very little every week. Must be cool hanging out with uh, Dom, teaching him a couple of things. Damien is kind of, you know, at around the same age as, Finn, age as Finn. Like, just you go out there, do the thing that you love to do with the friends that you like. It's a perfect life, I think. So why would you give that away? You know what I mean? So I can understand this yeah. decision completely. Uh, Brian, what do you think? Was this the right decision for Finn Balor? 100% it was the right decision. Why? <laughs> because the other company is the sinking Titanic. He is going to go and oh, be boy. Jay White 2.0 in AEW. Oh. Let's just be honest. That's just what's going to happen. Oh, He's going to go and be Jay White 2.0, be in the main event for two pay-per-views, and then uh, Finn Balor will fall off and be on the pre-show because that's what usually happens to people when oh, they don't boy. have any follow-up. So, um, yes, this was the right decision personally. I think that it's the right move for uh, Finn Balor. Just going ahead, finish out your career. This is most likely his last contract, as I believe he's 44, 45, might be a little bit younger. Mm. But uh, yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for Finn. And I think that he actually has a really, really good chance at, uh, at actually winning the title because they could easily try and implement a uh, Finn Balor and Damian Priest storyline. They could even have Finn Balor win Money in the Bank and replay that storyline again from a different point of view. So I definitely think he gets a title run before it's all said and done. Bro, you just put about four extra years on that man. He's only 42. Oh, he's only 42. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, but he is. You're right, though. I think this is definitely going to be his final contract. He probably signed for about three years. If it's yeah. not his final contract, he'll probably go to New Japan or New Japan and, you know, mm -hmm. just have like a vanity run just to have some fun. But uh, I think this was the right decision as well, because personally, I don't want to see him in AEW. I think right now he is a WWE guy and WWE really killed him because he was hot. He could have got to the top of the mountain. He did. But when he came back from that injury, I just feel like it cooled him off and he never got back to that point. No matter what Triple H does to try to rehab him. I don't think Finn Balor will ever be at that world heavyweight championship status. Well, maybe world heavyweight champion, if even that, but that's the ceiling. He'll never touch right, that right, right. championship again. So Finn Balor to WWE, lock him in, keep him in, because we don't want him. I mean, AEW don't want him. The next one <laughs> we got, uh, let's say Becky Lynch, who came back to Monday Night Raw from her, as she says, vacation and she won the women's championship. Now, uh, on the Ariel Helwani show, Brian, she said she had about four weeks left. Mm -hmm. Kiddo, did you see it? Did y'all see the show? 
Yes, we did. Yeah. yeah, so she said she had about four weeks left, and now she's the WWE champ or WWE women's champion. Do y'all think she signed another contract? Let's go ahead and start with Brian this time. Uh yeah. I think she signed another contract. Uh mm. I just don't see them putting the title on her. It's already been like three weeks since the uh the stuff happened, like the the interview with Ariel Hawani. So it would only make sense that she signed something. Maybe it's in her contract. Hey, you know, get the title again. That's I don't know. Um but uh yeah, I mean I'm not surprised at her winning the title i mean could it mean that they're just using her as a placeholder because they don't know who else to put it on i don't know i mean you had two Liv, clear options in there put it so. on Liv. You yeah, had I mean, story. You, yeah you had nia jackson you had Liv morgan that you could have easily mm-hmm. put it on if she didn't sign so part of me thinks she signed and and that plays real heavy into her spouse who kenny will later bring on bring up we so, are definitely going to bring on. <laughs> yeah, so well, yeah, Seth Rollins will be joining us in a minute, y'all. Stay <laughs> yeah, tuned. Yeah, <laughs> but Kato, what do you think? You think she signed? Did she put pen to paper? I think so. I mean, my first instinct after watching Raw was like, oh, I guess that they really want her to stay in the WWE. But it wouldn't make sense, right? Like using the title as the negotiation tactic if. Her contract is not locked in, then because that's going to be a lot of headache. You're going to essentially need to do another better royale if Bakelin says, you know what, AW just give me $20 million because why? Tony Khan has that money. So I'm out of here. So I think so. The fact that she has the title here, it means that WWE doesn't trust in Morgan, doesn't trust anybody else. They trust Becky to carry this company with that title forward for now until Rhea Ripley returns. So I think it's a pretty clear indication that she stays as her spouse. Well, I don't know. Hmm. So I don't know. I do not know 100% if this means she signed. Of course, if she, her contract was expiring in a few weeks, they wouldn't put the strap on her. But we got to think about it. Seth Rollins is injured. Um, they said he just had knee surgery. So if yeah. he's out, they could add surgery to, or uh, injury time to his contract, which means Becky Lynch, does she just sit on the sidelines when her contract expires? Or does she sign an extension until the end of Seth, Seth Rollins' contract? Right. Maybe she says, listen, I don't know. I don't want to go nowhere, but he's still thinking about it. So I'll sign an extension until his contract ends. So, I mean, it's possible that's what she did. And they want to put that um, strap on her to give her that up to try to make her like, we want to spotlight you. You're going to be our women for Monday Night Mm -hmm. Raw. And, you know, when that time comes, she hopefully signs. But I don't think this locks her in for sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. And again, it's always good. I mean, if she's going to um, leave and go to another company, you make her look bad on the way out. Have her <laughs> lose the championship, pour dog food on her head, and call it a day. Just like they did the big dog, even though he didn't leave. But <laughs> speaking of Seth Rollins, that's another guy who we don't know what's going on. I think it's interesting that at WrestleMania, we saw after the match, he was crying with tears in his eyes and everything. Cody Rose saying, I love you. And even like people will say, oh, it was a work. You mark, you're getting worked. Uh If you look at the videos and stuff from backstage, he's still back there crying, hugging everybody. So what's he crying about? Was he sad because he had this injury going and he was going to have to have surgery? Or did he know this is possibly my last WrestleMania for now? And I'm going to be going and leaving these guys pretty soon. What are the likeliness? What's the likeliness of this, um, Kiro? Because some people think it's just impossible, and Seth Rollins is locked into that WWE contract. I thought the same about Dean Ambrose. We see where John Moxley is right now. So, what do you think, Kiro? Yeah, it's, I mean, like, you, whenever you say locked in, you got to do it with a and take it with a grain of salt because you don't know these people personally, and you don't know what they think about. And Seth Rollins, on the record, has said in. A couple of interviews he's done recently is that wrestling used to be number one for me on everything ever since I was a teenager or ever since I was a little kid. Now that I have my own kid, my own daughter, it's kind of number two, almost three, because I have my daughter, I have my wife. And so, you know, like that's a pretty big sign of Seth Rollins saying, hey, man, like wrestling is, yeah, not the most important thing. So. I don't have to stay in the WWE. I can go to AEW if they're going to give me that money, that lighter schedule that, you know, Will Ospreay talks about, right? Or, you know, Sasha Banks or Mercedes Money talks about. Why Why don't go there? You know, you're going to do this, maybe a, a lot less amount of work. The quality can probably still be as high as you want it to be. Uh, and then 
you're going to get paid a, a lot more than you would be in the WWE. And yeah, one thing that gets me about this is, yeah, sure, be emotional. It's WrestleMania. You know, you finished up an amazing story. I get him crying, but like you said, he was crying everywhere all the time. Like, that seemed a bit more than it was necessary, you know? So it, it totally makes sense to kind of look into that a little bit more and, you know, try to find a meaning, further meaning. Because again, yeah. why are you crying that much? So, right. but with Becky right. now taking the title, I mean, I saw what they did to Dean Ambrose too uh, when, when he was leaving, right? Not just Roman Reigns. It, they, you know, put the syringe on his butt. They could, they could bury Becky Lynch. Um, yeah. Right. I'm just going to say, just because of what happened to Big Lynch, it, I just see it, it happening a lot less now with Seth Rollins because I don't think they want to get separated. Yeah, but that's right. Me. What do you say, Brian? I don't think Seth Rollins is going anywhere. I think right now he just has to heal up. I think the injury was probably more serious than I he up. thought. What? I can't hear you. Sound like you're talking away from the mic. Wait, can you hear me? I can hear you perfect now. Okay. It was like you were talking on the side. My bad. I mean, oh, no, I... no, you're good. We can just trim this on YouTube. No big deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't think he's going anywhere. I think that right now, uh, with Seth, I think it was just the injury probably was worse than everybody thought because, um, I saw a couple yeah. clips like going around the internet and it was kind of surprising. Like he took a Superman punch and his knee was like not even there. Like it was very odd how his Ooh. how his leg turned. Um, once he took it, like your leg is not supposed to look like that after taking a Superman punch, especially when it's going at your head and not your leg. So it was very odd. Um, I think that about night two, yeah, when he when he uh, took the chair shot from Roman Reigns, but yeah, mm -hmm. I just man, I don't know if Seth goes anywhere. I think the Becky thing kind of uh, says a lot more too. And Finn Balor signed today. I wonder if they just had a lot of wrestlers put ink to paper today and. It just hasn't yeah. been reported yet, aside from Finn, because he was the one that broke his own news. So uh, the Seth thing, not going to say that it's not possible, but I don't see him going anywhere. Maybe later in his career when he's on the run down and he's like, oh, you know what? I could get All a right. couple extra bucks. Let, let me just go to mm -hmm. AEW or whatever the case is. But right now, man, I don't know. Tough one. Yeah, I think he's the biggest possible grab they can get right now, though. Um, when you look at guys like Roman Reigns, it's absolutely not happening. But I think Seth Rollins is kind of the wild card that can go either way. And I want to see Seth versus Will Ospreay. So, Tony Khan, <laughs> pay that man some money. Yeah, that'd be fun.